Hi, so you've seen with the introduction to the blues scale, just a basic fingering on how to play this. There it is in G, root, minor third, fourth, flat five, fifth, flat seven, octave. So could it in C now, exactly the same structure, root, minor third, fourth, flat five, natural fifth, flat seven, octave. So it's the same fingering pattern. Now it was in G, now in C. Same pattern. Now, one of the good things to do when you're practicing stuff, doesn't matter if it's a scale, an arpeggio, uh, lick, idea, bass line, play the idea everywhere you can find it, all over the neck of the bass. There are two reasons for this. I guess the, the academic reason would just be to learn the neck of the bass and really be able to play stuff in various areas. But more importantly, the bass sounds different in different parts of, of the register on the neck. So for instance, you're not just playing something necessarily at a higher pitch, but just in a different part of the neck. For instance, let me show you what I mean. This C, this note here reoccurs here, has a slightly different sound. On, a, on an older bass like this, sometimes it has a little woollier sound. You might want to ha have that sound in the particular tune you're playing. You might want the option for that. So here's C blues scale played here on the neck, starting on the third fret of the A string. Here's the same scale played elsewhere on the neck. It's actually going to be up here. We're going to play it higher up, but on a lower pitch string, so we get the same note corresponding. We're actually going to play this on the eighth fret of the E string. If you look at your side dot markers, which I've talked about again when we're talking about the construction of the bass, and you have dot markers here, and they're usually placed on the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and twelfth frets, and then so on beyond. Let's look at this. We can find a C that corresponds to this C on the third fret of the A string. We can find the same C at the same pitch here on the eighth fret of the E string. So listen. Same pitch, but very different sonically. It's a little woollier, a little more old school sounding, higher up on the neck on the E string. So we're gonna play the same scale now and look at the fingering pattern, it's identical. Here we go, starting on our original position here, third fret, A string, C blues. Same scale, C blues, but now playing it on the eighth fret of the E string. Now, even just that, you can hear how different they sound. It's much more metallic and hard on the thinner strings here. Now here. It's a little woolly, a little fatter sounding here. Same scale though. Notice the fingering positions, hand position, exactly the same. Root, minor third, fourth, flat five, natural five, flat seven, octave. Back here. Root, flat third, fourth, flat five, natural five, flat seven, octave. Now, we've done that one so far. On this bass, those are the two places where we can play the same scale in the same register, but we can play now the same scale but one octave higher, so it's only higher in pitch. For instance, let me show you. People seem, and this is my experience with some of my students, my private students, when they're playing in this area of the neck, let's say beyond the 12th fret, people have a tendency to get a little lost up here, a little disoriented. I guess because as bass players, we probably aren't so familiar with this area of the neck, but it doesn't hurt to know this register as well if you have to play a melody, if you're reading a melody that's been written for you, or if you're playing a solo or whatever. So the great thing about the bass is it's so logical in the way it's laid out. So notice this. With the dots, either on the side or also on the facing of the fingerboard, you've got one here on the third fret of the A string. There it is, and there's your C. The double dot here, the octave mark on the 12th fret, you can see it's on the side, and you can see it's usually, if, you, if your bass, and it's very common for basses to have the dots on the front of the fingerboard too, you'll have a double dot or some sort of larger marking system here at the 12th fret or octave point. Now, if you treat that as being the same <coughs> as your nut or open string here. Everything else, all these dots, correspond with the ones here. 
So you have your first dot is the third fret here. There's a C on the A string. Imagine the double dots here or the octave point is like your open string or the nut here. So there's your first dot and guess what? That's a C as well, isn't it? So C, C there. So let's play C blues here. Well, check it out. It's exactly the same here. Everything you learn here, learn here as well. Move from one to the other and get comfortable with doing that. Then this area of the neck doesn't become intimidating. You're completely free to play in this register as freely as you can down here. Let's do it again. Root, minor third, fourth, flat five, natural five, flat seven, octave. Let's jump up. Here we go. Same C here, octave higher, same as that C actually, isn't it? Root, minor third, fourth, flat five, natural fifth, flat seven, octave. And here's how I practice this, and this is what I used to do when I was really uh, getting stuck into learning the basics of the bass. I'd play starting with all the lowest register positions I could of a particular scale or idea or arpeggio. And then I'd move to the highest ones in sequence. So I'd exhaust all the low ones first and then move to the higher alternatives, like this. So let's use the three different places to play C blues I've already showed you. First would be our starting position down here on the third fret of the A string. Now the next one, remember, was on the eighth fret of the E, and it's still in the same register. A little meteor sounding, remember? Then here's the C on the eighth fret of the E. And then up here to the C, again on the A string, but this time we're actually 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th fret. But like I said, treating the double octave point here, the octave point rather than the double dots, as your open string or nut, that dot corresponds to the dot here. So you've got C. So all three. And there you have it, three ways to play the same thing over the neck, two of them in the same register, and then the high one, and we just run them back and forth. Break it up, start with the high one now. Then here. Then here. A uh, great lesson one of my uh, bass teachers told me uh, a while ago when I was at music college was about creating a dialogue uh, between oneself on the bass. And especially if you're playing a little solo idea or something, you know, you can use question and answer ideas by using different registers on the instrument. So for instance, using that blues scale we've been looking at, we could take just a simple phrase. So there you can see I'm just playing back and forth. And that way, you can hear there's like a dialogue just within the instrument itself. And I'm able to play, you know, pretty freely up here. I know where I am, you know, if I'm starting an idea here up on the minor third. You can hear that. I'm just moving around. Or maybe I want it to sound a little rougher and more old school. So. See what I mean? I'm using like, a different sound here because here again, there's a little less string tension where I'm playing. It's a thicker string, so there's a little more overtone potential as well there. So if I'm playing. You see what I mean? There's so much you can get out of it, and that's just a blues scale. But you can hear I'm using the different sound and the different registers of the instrument to actually start creating some music out of this as well.